Time for worship. Okay, let's go. Race, you there. Welcome back to Children Worship. We're so glad you can join us today. So this past Tuesday was the end of the summer season and the fall season has begun. You know, fall season is my favorite time of the year because I love the cooler weather and also love watching the leaves fall off the trees. They're so beautiful. So John John, I heard this week you did a very nice water painting for the fall season at your school. Would you like to share with us? Sure. So this is my painting. There's a red tree a green tree, a orange tree, a brown tree, a yellow tree, and a blue tree. There's also leaves at the bottom because the leaves fall off of the tree. There's also a cloud and a sun. Wow, that's good work. Awesome job, John John. So are we going to continue talking about faith today? That's right, and we have another object lesson about faith. So let's go. Yeah. Sam Sam, what are you doing here? I don't know. Hurry, give me five again. Whoa, John John, glad you're back with us. So today's object lesson about faith, we're gonna be using this Ziploc bag full of water and we're gonna push a pencil through it, through the bag, and water is not gonna come out. Do you believe that's gonna happen? No. Well, there's actually science behind this because these type of plastic bag is made out of a material called polyphthalene. And this material has elasticity, which means when I push my pencil through it, it's going to cling to the side of the pencil and that's why the water wouldn't leak. But still, that's kind of hard to believe, right? Because we have never seen it happen before. So by faith, I'm going to take this action of pushing this pencil through it and believe that the water will not come out. Want to do it? Sure. Let's do it. So let me do the first one, okay? Oh, oh, it's through. I'm going to put through the other side through the other side too. Wow, we didn't leak out. Let me do one more. Oh, Wanna try one? Sure. Push it out through the other side. Wow, good job. Let's do one more. This time I'll put from the bottom up, see if it leaks, okay? Oh, and it didn't leak. Wow, the water really didn't leak out of the bag. So awesome. So the key is faith. Now, if I didn't truly believe this is gonna happen, and then I kind of hesitated, push a little through, and then push it, push it back out, what's gonna happen? The water might not stay inside the bag, right? And it's gonna leak out. So you have to have faith. Faith to believe and know that this is exactly what's gonna happen. And faith kept the water inside the bag. Awesome, right? But kids, our faith is not a blind faith. It doesn't mean we can blindly do things recklessly and thinking that everything will turn out right. Our faith is actually based on God's words and all His promises that He made to His people in the Bible. And that is why we're spending five weeks to teach you kids about faith. Today, we're gonna learn when scary and troubling time comes our way, we can have faith to know that God is a refuge for His people. God is our safe shelter. Awesome, so let's go back. All right. All right, that was a cool object lesson. And with that, let's start our worship. Today, Godwin will do the opening prayer for us. Take it away, Godwin. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us in our worship. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for protecting us through these weeks. Recently, a lot of bad things have been happening, like coronavirus, earthquakes, 
floods and also riots. As God said in Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people call by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. Let us focus in Jesus Christ as we worship. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to another week of Children's Online Worship with CBMC. Hope everyone had a great week. Today, we are going to continue our series on faith. But before we start, let's go back and review what you guys learned last week. Last week, we talked about Abraham obeying God and following God to a new home. Let's very quickly move from that story to where we are now. In his old age, God gave Abraham a son named Isaac. Isaac grew up and had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Jacob grew up and had 12 sons, 12 boys. Can you guys imagine a house filled with 12 boys running around? There's probably a lot of yelling and destruction in that household. But anyway, one of Jacob's sons, Joseph, he was sold into slavery into Egypt by his brothers. Then God used him to save his family from famine and move them to Egypt. Right before Joseph died, he made his family promise to take his bones to the promised land when God came to rescue his people and lead them to the promised land. About 400 years have passed since Joseph died and Jacob's family has grown to be a huge nation. Wait a minute, what was the promise that God made to Jacob's grandfather Abraham? Let's read Genesis 12 too. God told Abraham, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. It looks like God had kept that promise. Exodus 1.7 says, The Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly. That means they had a lot of kids. And became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. Just to make sure we're all on the same page here, what land were the Israelites in? That's right. They were living in Egypt, and they were filling the land. But how do you guys think that made the Egyptians feel? 
The Egyptian leaders were afraid that the Israelites would fight against them and take over the whole country, so they made the Israelites into slaves and treated them badly. But the worse they treated the slaves, the more children they had. Then Pharaoh started panicking because he couldn't get rid of the Israelites. So he thought that if he couldn't keep them from having lots of babies, he would start getting rid of the babies. Man, these are some really scary times for the Israelites, huh? Have you kids ever had faced some scary times before? Or maybe a situation that was very tough for you? Let's hear some sharing. When I was scared was when I was scared of the dark and I could not have a good night's sleep. Hi, my name is Kristen. Something I am scared about is when all the electricity was gone and so the whole house is dark. And then so I was so scared and then the firefighters and the police are all here. So I thought it was a big situation. Um, so all the lights were off, even my AC had died. I am so scared. Hey, thanks kids for sharing your story of your tough or scary time. As for my story of a tough or scary time, I remember back when I was either in middle school or high school, a time when I went to the park to play tennis with my friends. Uh, well, after tennis, we were all walking back toward my friend's house when a car pulled up slowly behind us and this guy got out and he demanded that, you know, he basically wanted all our stuff. So the first thing we did was like, we ran. We ran all the way back to my friend's house. And I remember that for myself, as I approached my friend's house, he had this like maybe six foot tall wooden fence that I just leapt over and like landed in his backyard. And then like one second later, our friend just opened up the gate and he walked in. We were all very fortunate that the guy in the car didn't decide to follow us or chase us down. So as we face tougher scary times, it's good to know that by having faith in God that he can be a refuge for his people. So let's continue on with the Bible story. So Pharaoh wants to get rid of all the Israelite babies. He told the midwives, which were all the ladies that would help all the mommies have the babies, to kill all the boy babies and only let the girl babies live. But these women trusted God more than they were afraid of Pharaoh and they wouldn't do so. So they let the boy babies live and they lied to Pharaoh when they were asked about what happened. Since that plan didn't work for Pharaoh, he came up with a new plan. His new plan was to tell all the Hebrew people that if they had a baby boy, they had to throw him into the Nile River. In Exodus 2, we read about a man who married and had a baby boy. The Bible says that the baby's mom saw that he was a fine child and she hid him. There's no way that she could kill him, so she did the only thing that made any sense. She hid him. For three months, she kept him hidden in the house. Can you imagine how his family must have masked the sounds of his cries with other noises and only invited people over to visit when he was asleep? They couldn't show the baby off to their friends or take him outside the house for walks because no one could know that they had a baby boy in their house. When the baby was three months old, his mom couldn't hide him any longer so she got a basket, coated it with tar so that it would be waterproof, and put the baby in the basket and carefully placed the basket in the tall grass at the edge of the river. Of course she didn't throw him into the river like Pharaoh's orders had said, but it's, it's interesting that she just put him in the river. And then she left his sister there by the river to watch and see what happened. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe and she spotted the basket floating in the river. She sent one of her servants to get the basket and she opened it up to find the baby. She knew it was an Israelite baby, but he was crying and she felt sorry for him. When the baby's sister saw Pharaoh's daughter taking him out of the water, she came over to the princess and asked if she should get one of the Israelite women to come feed and take care of the baby for the princess. His sister went and got their mom and the princess offered to pay her to take care of the baby and care for him and feed him and bring him back to her when he was older. How awesome is that? God provided for this baby to be still with his family. The Bible tells us that when the baby got older, his mom brought him back to the princess who raised him and named him Moses 
because she drew him out of the water. One thing we can see clearly in this story is that both the midwives and Moses' family trusted God more than the Pharaoh. Let's see what Hebrews 11 has to say about Moses' family. Hebrews 11.23 says, By faith Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they were not afraid of the king's edict, his, his law or his rule. They believed by faith that God had a plan and as his mom placed him in the river, she trusted that he would be safe in God's plan. As Moses grew up, he learned to turn to God when he needed a place to hide. So kids, by faith, God can also be a refuge for us during difficult and scary times too. Have you ever experienced God helping you through difficult situations before? Let's hear some more sharing. What helped me when I was scared was when I was scared of the dark and then I prayed to God and then God helped me have better rest and I overcome my fear. Hi again. How God helped me was when when I prayed in one minute, God just helped me to be and then all the electricity was back on. I was so happy. Finally, I said finally, and then everything was good again. Hey, thanks for sharing again, kids. It's very encouraging to know that God is working in our lives today. So to summarize today's story, let's watch this video together. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Moses. This is Moses. Moses was a descendant of Joseph's brother Levi. Hey! Joseph and his brothers had many children and grandchildren who lived happily in Egypt. Eventually, a new pharaoh came to power who knew nothing of Joseph or what he had done. This pharaoh feared the Israelites because there was a great number of them living in Egypt. So he wanted to put a stop to their prosperity. <laughs> Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves. He made them work long, hard hours building up Egyptian cities. But his plan didn't work, and the Israelites grew more in number and in strength. Eek. So Pharaoh made a rule that no Israelite boy would be allowed to live in Egypt. This is where Moses' story begins. You see, when Moses was born, his mother saw that he was a special baby. Hmm. And she kept him hidden for three months. But when she could no longer keep him a secret, she made a basket and put him in the Nile River among the reeds. Moses' sister stayed to watch what would happen to her baby brother. And soon the Pharaoh's daughter came to the edge of the river. When she saw the basket, hey. she sent her servant to get it. When she saw the baby, she felt sorry for him, uh -huh. thinking he must be an Israelite baby who wasn't supposed to live. Then Moses' sister asked the princess if she would like her to find an Israelite woman to take care of the baby. Uh -huh. So Moses' sister went and got her mother. Moses' own mother took care of him until he was old enough to live in the Pharaoh's house, where the princess adopted him as her son. And so Moses, an Israelite boy who wasn't supposed to live, became the adopted grandson of the Pharaoh and lived in the palace as God prepared him for a great destiny that was only just starting to unfold. What an amazing story, boys and girls. I love how God watched out for baby Moses the whole time. Did you know that God watches out for both me and you? It's true. God has a special plan for each of your lives. He is with you wherever you go, protecting you. By faith, you can always turn to God as a refuge and look to Him when you need a place to hide. 
Thanks, kids. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for being God who just loves us and takes care of us and knows about everything that's going on in our hearts and minds, including all our difficulties and troubles. I pray that all of us can just turn to you every day whenever we're in trouble or doubt or fear and um, not be afraid to just um, hide in your presence because we know that you will protect us. Continue to watch over us and protect us as we start a new week and um, go back to school and work for all the mom and dads. Um, pray all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. All right, kids. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Stay safe and healthy, okay? Take care. Thank you, Teacher Ricky, for the awesome sermon. It's good to know in times of trouble, God can be our refuge. And with that, Daniel will read us today's memory verse. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Let's read today's memory verse together. Psalm 32, 7. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of delivery. Psalms 32, 7. And now Number one, Kids Virtual Groups. So a few weeks ago, we mentioned that we wanted to start Kids Virtual Groups. We want to meet with you guys online to play game activities, to share with one another, and to learn the Bible together. So we have been trying to recruit more adult leaders to help us to form these groups. And this coming week, we'll be sending an email out to your parents to have you kids start signing up. But we only have a limited amount of leaders, so that means we can only accept a limited amount of kids. So don't miss out, ask your parents to sign you up this week. And just to give you a preview, our very first virtual activity would be an online treasure hunt. So whichever kids can complete this activity will be able to earn a fun and special prize. Oh, what price is it? We're gonna keep that a secret for now. Oh, you gave me so pumped. So be sure to ask your parents to sign you up. Let's go to the next segment. Number two, litter bugs in Thailand will find a surprise in their mailbox. Litter bugs who drop rubbish in Thai national parks may get a surprise when they check their mail. Their litter may have been returned to them. Thailand has decided to take a stand on increasing amount of wrappers, plastic balls, and paper that's thrown away in national parks. It asked park wardens to collect litter and mail it back to tourists. It comes with a letter that says, we collected your garbage and sent it to your home. This should be a lesson to you, to never throw away waste anywhere. There are additional penalties like prison or a $16,000 fine. The severe penalties are because litter is an eyesore in many of Thailand's beauty spots. It is fairly easy to find offenders because visitors to the parks must register their address when they enter. Anyone who leaves litter near the camping spot will get their waste back. The head of a park near Bangkok explained the return to littering policy. He said it can be dangerous for animals like deer if they eat the rubbish and try to digest plastic waste that people leave behind. The government said people should only leave footprints behind. So kids, don't be a litter bug anywhere. Belgium was produced in one piece with Europe's biggest 3D printer. So, do you kids know what a 3D printer is? Do you know what a 3D printer is? Yeah, I do. A 3D printer is a device that uses computer-aided design to create three-dimensional objects through a layering method, usually with plastic or other materials. Well, basically, they are machines that can build creative things in 3D. They are really popular right now and making small creative things, like these Pokemon toys. Take a look. Now, let's imagine if we build a giant 3D printer. Do you think you can print out something like a house? That would be crazy. Yeah, well, it is crazy and it's also real. 
A construction company in the country of Belgium built a huge 3D concrete printer and was able to successfully print out a house. Not only was it only able to print out a house, but a two-story house. What's amazing is that they were able to print out the entire house without much assembly required. Just print and voila, a two-story house. Check it out. Brianna, if you have a 3D printer, what would be something useful you would make and why? Hmm, I would make a stand for all my folders, notebooks, and textbooks so that my desk is a little more. How about you, Krista? Well, I would make a hair pin to put in my hair when I tighten my hair into a bun. Cool, now let's go on to our next segment. What's up segment number four. Yay! Number four. Finding a COVID-19 vaccine is not the only challenge. When there's a vaccine for COVID-19, governments will be scrambling aircraft. Distributing and vaccines will be one of the biggest logistical operations ever. Airline experts say transporting the vaccine globally will need 8,747 cargo planes. And just to put things in perspective, there were a total of 427 Boeing 747 aircraft planes in airline service as of August 2020. And we will need 8,000 of them. This is enough for 7.8 billion doses of a vaccine, one dose for everyone on Earth. The experts warned the government they must start planning for the mission of the century. They said, if we assume that half the needed vaccines can be transported by land, the air cargo industry will still face its largest single transport challenge ever. The experts said many obstacles must be overcome to distribute a vaccine. One key element is to create temperature control cargo hubs and warehouses. The vaccine must be kept at the same temperature throughout its journey. Staff must be trained and quickly become expert at safety handling the vaccine. The experts said another challenge would be security cross board controls. They said vaccines will be, will be highly valuable. Arrangements must be placed to ensure that shipments remain secure and temporary and theft. So kids, finding a vaccine for COVID-19 is really a first of many steps to get the vaccine to all the people. We definitely need to keep all these in prayers. And now it's everybody's favorite Christmas time. Let's work hard and finish this together. Let's do it. Hi boys and girls. Welcome to Craft Time with Miss Craft this week. I'm so excited to be here with you today. We're gonna make something cool and awesome. See that? We're gonna make a watermelon gift box. Hmm, before we do that, we are going to check out some pictures. Once again, it's always a joy to receive your craft pictures and your emails and comments. And um, look at the creepers that you guys made, so cute. Hmm. All right, if you would like to show me your craft or send me some comments or suggestions, please send it to the email address below. Now, we are going to learn this cute gift box. It's a watermelon gift box. It has a face and also it opens when you can put something inside. You can do candies, you can do little small notes. Well, let's start. Boys and girls, inside your blessing box, there's two, there's supposed to be two um, larger square papers. There either comes with um, a green one, a dark green one, uh, 
a pink a pink one or um, they're if um, they're coming with um, a light green uh, or red one so just get out the slightly larger square paper from your blessing box and we need two of them and we need a small strip of white paper you can you can cut it off from any scratch paper that you have and we need one marker a um, white glue or your glue stick your pair of scissors okay this is how easy it goes all right let's mm, let's start so get out your green piece of paper and we started to fold remember the green side we fold it in okay the green side so we fold it diagonally in half and switch over to the other side diagonally in half so you get two lines then you fold it um, half line up okay half to the other side all right all right then you make sure okay the line goes um, both ways okay. crisscross both ways All right. then let's push them in okay let's push them in so to make a square this okay all right then the open side on the bottom okay we fold the bottom up okay and we fold the bottom up there you go after we do that we flipped it, okay, we flipped it over, cover it to this side, okay, to this side. And we fold from this angle, we fold to the middle line. Alright, same thing. We turn it around, we do the same thing. From the side and go fold it to the middle line. Do the same thing to the other one as well. Alright. Now we're gonna have like a cone shape like this. Then we get the little tall angle. Fold it up. Okay, like this. Then you see the line here? We're gonna follow the line and fold this down. Follow the line and fold this down. Then we're gonna follow this line and fold this up. All right. See this? All right. And then we're gonna flip this inside. Tucked in. Okay. Let's do it again. So go up. Pointy triangle. Go up. Then goes down. Push it down and then goes up again. Okay, there we go. Then we fold it inside. Just tuck it inside. Okay. Alright. Then we flip this over. Okay. Flip this over again. We have this angle up here and we fold it down. And we fold it to the line here. See here? Okay, we fold it this way. Alright, then we pull the angle up again and line it up with this line again. And once again, we're gonna tuck it in. Okay, we're gonna tuck it inside. There we go. One more time. Fold the angle down, fold a line. On up the edge and then pull the angle up and then line up to the edge and then we 
pull it up and to tuck it in, okay? There we go, boys and girls. Then now, let's flip it over. Let's open it up. Okay, open it up. Oopsie. Open it up and put it down inside, down under, and push under so that um, this will have, use your fingers, okay? And push it a little in the edge so it stands well. Right, let's see. And flip it over and put, push it to the edge. So make sure all four corners are in well and then yeah there we go that's it so now we have the base okay the base of the box then after we have the base we'll put it aside first okay then we get out another piece of paper and we did it we did the um the beginning again this time the pink or the red will go outside, okay? Outside of the paper. So we fold and half and half and diagonally. And so we have this line, okay? And then also we make sure these lines goes, um, goes full through and route. And afterwards, we're gonna push it, push it down to form a square again, okay? Got it? So after we've done that, see the top, the closed top? We're gonna fold. We're gonna pick it from the close top, the angle, okay, sharp angle, up. And then we're gonna fold the side towards the center line, okay? We do it four sides. Then we pull the top down, this top angle down, okay, okay, we open it up, just like before, we tuck in the angle inside, we tuck the angle inside, okay, got it, then we pull this angle out, and push it down to become a, another square, okay? See that? So pull the angle out and push it down to become another square. Then we pull the open side angle up, okay? We do it both sides. And then we fold this little angle up as well for both sides. There we go. Both sides. Yeah. And then we're gonna open it up, okay, and tuck these four angles in as well. Follow the line and tuck them in. lines and tuck them in okay okay now four angles are tucked in you have this triangle okay right then remember we fold this down here we tuck this whole entire big one inside okay just be careful and do it little by little okay you, you can do it and then do the other side as well. Tuck it up, okay, and then tuck it in. So the entire thing will become red or pink. Okay, it depends on the color that you have. All right, you see this line and these lines? And you make sure those lines are 
unfold it out so um, the watermelon can stand out. Okay, all right. Then it's time to draw our watermelon seeds and face. Okay. All right. Now you draw some seeds on top and draw a little mouth. Okay. Then we need to get our little piece of paper out and fold it in half. And we cut a circle out, something like um, something like this to make to make eyes. And then we need to get out our marker and draw and draw the eyes inside this paper. Then we're gonna tape the eyes on the, um, on the watermelon. Then we draw the eyes, the eye, and then uh, this watermelon seed and the face. We're gonna put it inside, okay, the box, okay, like this. There we go. Well, well, boys and girls, there we go. That's our watermelon gift box. You're welcome to put candies inside or a little message. The reason why we're making this gift box, remember today's lesson, the, fa the, the salvation, not, it's not by what we do, and it's not cannot be bought by good doings, but good behavior, but by faith. So this is the gift of God. So by making this wonderful watermelon gift box, I hope it reminds you our salvation is gift from the Lord. So no one can boast about it. Hmm. Well, I hope to see your pictures of this craft. Well, until next time, see you guys. Bye-bye. Hi, boys and girls. Let's close today's worship with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us such a wonderful worship time today. Please help us to remember you are our refuge. You are our hiding place. You will protect us from trouble and surround us with a song of deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. See you all next week. And wish you all have a blessed and wonderful week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Whoa, John John get get Whoa John John get get ah. <laughs> Whoa John John glad you're back with us <laughs> Whoa John John glad you're back with us So today's object lesson about faith And now it's time for crap time Well they just walk by <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.